Welcome back to another week with another fun question. We're ending this four-part series with a question about Hinduism. What about Christianity and Hinduism? Can the two coexist together? Are there similarities, differences? Well, stay tuned to find out more. You'll want to watch the whole video to see where this is going. Similarly to Buddhism, a lot of the outward expressions of Christianity and Hinduism may seem like they work well together. A major one is love. In Christianity, the greatest commandment is to love God with all of yourself and to love your neighbor as yourself. One way we do that is by treating others with kindness. Hinduism also teaches loving others through acts of kindness. Furthermore, both of them teach unreciprocated love, meaning that we don't show love and kindness to others because we are thinking of how they can do the same back. For example, James says, pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Visiting orphans and widows in their distress means that we are to do good to them. The reason for orphans and widows is because these are two major groups of individuals that have nothing to offer you in return. Orphans have no parents to provide for them, and unlike today, there is no system from the government to do so. Widows back then lost all means of financial support when their husbands died. You might have learned in history about Mahatma Gandhi, who led the movement to free India from British rule. And the key thing to note about this movement was that it was one of non-violence. This all revolved around one of the key virtues, which was showing compassion. It's also key to Buddhism as well. And yet the love that Christians are to show is fundamentally different than that of Hindus and Buddhists. Yeah, the foundation is different. The greatest commandment is to first love God, which is then to flow out into loving our neighbor. Our love for others comes from our love for God. So if we don't truly love God, we cannot truly love our neighbors. And what that love looks like is also different Ultimately, true love is putting more of Christ in someone's life. Both Buddhism and Hinduism, which are not so much religions but ethical systems, define love simply as selflessness. So while on the outside, things like love, humility, and forgiveness might unify Christianity with both Buddhism and Hinduism, on the inside, they are completely different. We already covered some of it in the last video on Buddhism. Christians show these things because God has shown these things. Our love for him motivates us to show similar virtues to each other. So even the similarities are completely different. But Christianity is also monotheistic with worship toward one God while Hinduism is polytheistic, believing not just in many gods, but many possibilities of gods. There is an uncertainty within it. And this has to do with the fact that in Hinduism, truth is relative to experience. Whereas in Christianity, truth is defined by who God is. So for the Hindu, even the definition of love can vary from person to person. It's not about what's wrong and what's right in Hinduism. It's about everyone determining right and wrong for themselves. So that's just a little bit on Hinduism. Remember, these videos aren't meant to be a comprehensive study of topics. They're only meant to be brief overviews to help you out. If you want to do more self-study, that's up to you. But the things we say here are just the tip of the iceberg. But one more thing to leave you guys with before we end this video, here on the offensive line, we love football. The teamwork and athleticism, it's a great sport and a great way to exercise. And speaking of exercise, one of the fastest growing exercises in the US is yoga. I think it's actually more popular than CrossFit. Many people practice it for the benefits of learning how to breathe and increasing their flexibility. But yoga is not just a physical exercise. Most people practice it just for that, but if you get deeper into it, you'll see that yoga cannot be separated from its roots in Hinduism and Buddhism. It's more than just an exercise, but teaches a philosophy that is completely counter to the biblical understanding of mankind, of man's body, spirit, and soul. Now we're not saying that Christians can't practice the physical exercise of yoga that help in strengthening and improving flexibility, but due to how closely tied the exercises are with spiritual deceptions that come along with it, there might be better exercises that can achieve the same results out there. So just a note of caution before you get into something that may seem harmless simply because of the true purposes of yoga. Hopefully that was another helpful and encouraging video for you. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more content. 
leave us a comment down below if you have anything to say, whether it's a question on something related or not, or whether you just want to say hi. This is the end of our series on world religions that seem similar to Christianity. And our next one is on certainty. What does that mean? Tune in to find out. We are the offensive line, preparing you for defense so that you can have the best offense. I'll see you next time. Thank you.